So this is just a little video I put together as far as how to calculate your spoke length when building a wheel and kind of just the way I like to actually lace the wheel. Um, anyway, as far as to determine your spoke length, what you want to do first is know what uh, the width of the actual hub is from lock nut to lock nut there as far as where it actually goes into the frame or the fork, which most road bikes are, you know, 130, mountain bikes common is 135, although there's some newer sizes, and then your standard front is uh, 100 millimeters, but um, anyway, so what we're doing here is we, you know, I basically have split the 130 into two halves of 65. Um, this, the 45 millimeters there, that's going to be our flange diameter, which is measuring from the center of each spoke hole, you know, across the, basically the, the diameter from one hole to the other. Uh, from here, I'm measuring from the lock nut to the top of the flange there, so we can, basically the number we're trying to determine is from, you know, the flange to the center of the hub. So, normally what I'll do here is, you know, from the top of the flange there to the lock nut, um, that number is 47 millimeters, so what we want to do is subtract 47 um, from 65, and that's going to give us 18. So we've got from the very center of the hub to that flange next to the cassette there on the drive side, that gives us a center to flange number of 18 millimeters. Um, so on the other side, we're going to measure that. Um, and the reason we're getting these numbers is because this is all you know, all, you, you, there's formulas where you can manually calculate them, but, you know, there's so many different spoke calculators out there. You can just put these numbers in, and they'll automatically tell you what spoke length you're going to use. So um, this one for the, was 28 millimeters from the lock nut to the flange, so that gives us a uh, measurement of 37 millimeters from the flange to the very center of the hub there. So um, we got those numbers and then we've got our 45 millimeter uh, flange diameter number so that's the three crucial numbers there from the actual hub um, what we'll need next is the what they call the ERD which is your effective rim diameter um, essentially what that is is kind of the basically like the inside diameter you know of the of the rim is from well, you know basically from the where the spoke seats into the rim either side all the way across the diameter there so these are a couple little sticks the little they call them the rim rods which it's you know basically you'll take the overlap which is 94 millimeters in this case um, and subtract it from 700 which gives us a ERD of 606 um, you know that's something you could basically measure there as well um, I typed it into our QBP spoke calculator and that's what I got. But here's another spoke calculator from uh, DT there that, you know, basically you just type those numbers in and gave us the same numbers. So, um, you know, normally once we, this is something I do just at the shop, I'm just showing this as a demonstration that, you know, once we get our, we have this little fill wood machine that we can basically cut our spokes down any, any length we need. So it's definitely a handy little tool to have there. Um, anyway, so I've got the got our spokes cut there. Um, I usually like to lay them out on the bench and, you know, like the left hand side, put the non-drive side, and then maybe lay on the on the right side, the drive side spokes. But um, So if you want to really make a pro looking wheel, I always like to have your uh, the uh, label lined up with the valve stem hole, which uh, you know, one way you can do that is say if you're doing a three cross wheel, you can take the spoke, the hole that's right there, yeah, basically over the logo and say that, you know, say you're going to do a three cross, you can go zero, one, two, three, and put it down in that, you know, almost really like the fourth hole, you know, you count the first one as zero, but if you start there and then that's your very first spoke, you put in the hub, and that's going to line up. You know, that's going to be the one just to the uh, left of your valve stem hole. And you run that one in there, it'll run just right. But what, what I've done here, I'm, I'll kind of give a couple little examples of this so you can see it better. It's kind of hard to see with a 
black spokes at the black hub but I'll start off with that first spoke on the drive side and then all the, all the spoke holes kind of offset each other they're not you know if you look through one spoke hole you're gonna look straight through and then on the flange it's gonna meet in between two other holes so um, you know generally what I, I will do is um, you know I'll put put the first spoke hole in once I determine where I want to put it and then on the other side there I'll put the uh, put the spoke going the same direction but in the hole that is directly the next hole to the right I guess you could say so right here I've got all my spokes put in I'll show another little example here in just a minute like I say that I, I use different colored spokes you can kind of see but from here I'll take the first you know set of spokes and then run that right up into my rim um, you know so it's going to be you're doing the, the two holes there right next to your uh, the, the valve stem hole would be just right there where my thumb is basically um, so you know, you'll start with those two it, you know this is a little different method than um, what I typically see on you know a lot of the internet sites or what people learn how to build wheels initially but um, got the nipples soaked them in linseed oil I usually do that it's kind of like a spoke prep kind of like a Loctite type thing um, so you know from there just you get you know knock them out two at a time or you can kind of work in groups of four um, but I uh, I've got another hub here that I just kind of wanted to illustrate um, basically this you know how I'll, I'll start it off once you get your first four spokes it's pretty straightforward you just follow this pattern and you know work along but I use I, these are actually the wrong link spokes but I just used them to kind of illustrate how I'll start so you know that's the one to start it off with that logo there so that you see you got zero one two three um, so that's going to be the spoke there that ends up right next to the valve stem hole uh, so what, what I'll do next is drop the spoke in on the opposing side that the hole there that's just to the right of that you know we're line up with the red so right there I'm going to drop the next spoke in there um, so this is a what I like to do this in this particular way where I'll put all the spokes in the hub and then put them in the rim so basically I'll do all the lower ones first there and then the upper um, and I didn't do the whole hub here I'm just just a few just to illustrate the you know this is a three cross pattern so you got your first red spoke there you lay over each you know three of the white spokes cross it and then that's your two you know that you know like I say there's different lengths but that's going to be the hub you know the ones that end up right next to the, your the red spoke will be right just to the left of the valve stem hole and you'll skip a hole and then the white one and if you go you know look just to the other side um, you'll, you'll grab the same group of spokes that are basically parallel but um, just just to the left you know a, a half a spoke hole and you know that's the two that you would want to do intermesh with the, the, the two following spokes there so I don't know it may seem a little confusing but th this method once you get it figured out it's really really quick going so anyway here's our original wheel we we're building um, so you know this spoke that I've got in my hand it's it's it basically follows the the path of the spoke the very first spoke we put in it's just it's a half a hole behind on the flange there to the to the left and then it's gonna be you know one hole behind to the left on the rim itself so you you know that would be your spoke there that you would put just behind the the very first spoke we put in and then likewise the spoke that crosses over three times is going to follow you know just to the left of the the second spoke that we have crossing over so you got that group of four spokes and you know it's pretty easy once you get this these four in here you can just basically move on to the other side you know so that you know the first two we put on were on the drive side these two are on the non-drive side so you know if I just rotate this rim a little from here then we're gonna go to our next group which you know as far as from here the next group would be on the on the on the non-drive side again so I grab my next spoke in line it's just like a bunch of people at the bank waiting you just grab the next two groups in line there and um, 
and basically thread those into the ram. So it just you, know, you just follow one to the other, and you know, kind of the beauty of this once you you know get it going, it's pretty quick going. You don't have to you know it's not like the method that I'll typically see where they'll show people how to do you know you'll do one side of all the spokes with the with the heads facing out and then the heads facing in on one side you know on the drive side and then flip the wheel over and do the non-drive side and the thing with that is it you know takes a little while longer and then you have to bend your spokes around which for a beginner that might be a little easier way to do it but um, so you can see here I've done the I, did those two spokes on the non-drive side. I grabbed the two next spokes in line on the drive side. So you're just alternating back and forth, drive side, non-drive side, just grabbing the next two spokes in line there. So it's it's really pretty simple once you once you learn it this way, and it's it's a lot faster as far as from a you know production standpoint. If you had to build several wheels, or you know uh, if you ever get into a point where you're you know building plenty of wheels this is by far the the quickest method I've ever found um, so yeah anyway this is kind of another illustration where I'm going over basically doing the same thing got the first two two sets of spokes in and we're going on to the uh, you just keep rolling along there um, the next two in line I think this may be just a re read part of the video that I've done over somehow but anyway that's if you just look at it in groups of four you know there are two they just stagger over each other that would be the next two there on the non-drive side next two would be uh, uh, on there right there on the drive side so if you just keep following that pattern follow along and it's pretty simple um, you know here's I got some video of me just doing the whole thing start to finish this is the actual front hub so um, doing first lining up determining where that next spoke on the non-drive side goes so I'll put all the spokes in you know say if this is the non-drive side um, you know this is a front hub so it's I guess technically there would be a drive side and a non-drive side but and then, you know once I get the the spokes in that are I guess on the uh, this is you know what you would call an asymmetric lacing pattern where it's the uh, it's kind of the I guess you could couldn't like the mirror image if there was a mirror in the center of the hub the other side looks the same but uh, anyway so you'll you know put all the spokes in on you know facing one direction flip the hub over you know and then from there there's only one way you can put the spokes in it's you know there's empty holes for each spoke going the other way so all you should put them in the bottom side first and then the the top side that way you're just not you're not working around you know working over yourself like trying to get go through extra spokes um, you know and then from there it's pretty easy to determine which spoke was the first one you put in you, know, you can just kind of backtrack and look at the logo and count your holes like where you you know initially had put the first one in and you grab your group of two spokes the initial spoke the spoke that's crossed over by the third time and then uh, you just go in that first and third hole there on the um, on the drive side which is the hole immediately to the left of the valve hole and then the hole you know skip a hole and then go to the next one and you know from there you just uh, follow the follow the pattern basically it's pretty straightforward um, you know there, there I've seen quite a few videos here on YouTube where it's basically I've, I haven't really seen any that are showing this particular method um, but, you know it, it, any place you know where there's building a high quantity of wheels production wheels or whatever this is typically the method that you'll see being used um, but anyway yeah that's uh, the basic gist of it and uh, that's what I'm covering in this uh, video here is just the actual um, wheel building itself I may do the, the another video this is kinda of going along with the class I'm teaching as far as how to build wheels and such and um, so we're not going to get into the tensioning and truing part just yet this is just the basic um, getting the wheel together so uh, got a few more minutes and enjoy if you feel like it subscribe to the video for other 
video similar to this and uh, anyway thanks for watching Das ist schwer zu ertragen, aber schön anzusehen, bitte weitergehen. Wir haben Marktversagen, das uns alle betrifft. Wir posten und wir werden von dir daran gelegt. Sagen. Doch das gilt nicht für die, die die Struktur aufbauen, der so nun sein sieht. Wir haben Marktversagen, da gibt es viele Fragen. Wer bisher nichts von dem ist voller Helme und Sport. Wer um sein Einkommen bangt, wird aggressiv und wie Gott. Meine Zeit der Plattform machen sie wertvoll und reich. Ich kaufe. Tablet, Kopfhörer, Netzwerk, Mobiltelefon, Apokalypse.